recently my son decided to take the dog for a walk which is great but he also took the turkeys for a walk too concluded I can just cut the main field and then leave all the other smaller fields for another day because if we leave this it's gonna get too thick So I managed to get uh, the whole eight acre field cut. It was about three hours. I had to stop twice to unclog the hay cutter because there was so much mud and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I even raised the bar up a little bit higher on it thinking that for whatever reason, maybe it's just digging into the dirt, which it shouldn't be. Well, Eric pointed out that when he was collecting the hay bales on first cutting, he noticed a lot of ant mounds. We just had rain so of course if there's ant mounds in the field i'm going to be digging them out with a hay cutter and it's going to be mud instead of dirt so a lot of the grass didn't get cut quite as cleanly as i would have liked um see how tall that is it should have been a lot shorter and this was before i even raised it up look how tall that is um i actually had a lower to try to collect as much as i could <sighs> Ah, this is definitely just the year for bugs. And then we can see some spots where it looks like it might be dying off, like right here. You can see like right here, it cut it really super short and right here, it cut it really long. And that's just because in this spot right here, it was probably where there was an anthill at some point on the field and it clogged up that group of cutters. Now this is a problem because this is a big clump that's not gonna dry. You see that? Well, it'll dry eventually, but it's not going to dry very evenly. Um, I took the Havsco electric bicycle out here because it's just so much faster than walking. And don't get me wrong, it's not that far from the house, but you know, if you've got a lot of stuff to do, it's just so much nicer just to hop on the bike and just run out to the field. So yeah, you can see a lot that hasn't dried very good. The areas that are a little bit more thin and a little bit more evenly spaced out, we can see the whole top layer is already dried. And it hasn't even been a full 24 hours yet. I mean, this is, the top layer right here, I could probably bail this off and it would be okay. Um, obviously right here, that's still very wet. And everything underneath doesn't even look like it's dried yet. We've got some dandelion in here. Um, and of course our orchard grass, which looks like it is still on the field. Um, so this is why, um, one reason you might want to tet it is so that the stuff underneath can actually come up to the surface and get dried. Um, raking it to a certain extent will do that too. So you could have in a completely sun bleached out top layer and a fully completely green bottom layer that's not even dry yet. What would you do? Would you tut it or would you rake it? After some thought, I decided that I'm going to tut the hay field, um, especially since I'm going to be the one bailing it. It's going to be Tuesday and Wednesday, so it has to be dry. So, yeah. Well, look how nice it looks. It's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Unfortunately, tutting it's going to make it a little bit more brown, but um, it's still going to have the same nutrition in it. So. Uh, like this clump right here that definitely needs to get tidied and some of the areas that are a little more matted down so hopefully it will just fluff it up in the row and not scatter it all over because if it scatters it and you see those areas where there's lighter green that's where my tire tracks have to go if the hay scatters into those side areas i'm going to end up running it over on the next pass through and so it's going to be a whole strip of stuff that not only has been tutted, but now it's smashed down into the ground, so it's not gonna dry. 
So that's why I don't like to tie it with the New Holland because it is too big. The TYM is just almost about the right size. Just a hair bit too big, but way better than the New Holland. So um, I really prefer to tie it with the TYM, but it still has the backhoe on there. So we're gonna be using the New Holland because it is free on the back. There we go. Um, we don't need the RPMs up very high. And the other thing is if we go too fast, it's gonna bounce and it's not gonna tut it. So we're gonna try this. Um, right now we're in B3 with the rabbit ear on. So let's give this a shot and see what we got here. So I skipped three rows, which I hope is gonna be adequate. And so that's what we got right now. That's still scattering it everywhere. So that's, gosh. Let's see how I just cleared it out. Yeah, see, I just cleared that whole thing. Yeah, it'll dry nice like that, but one, I'm not gonna be able to see what I've tutted, and two, I'm gonna run that stuff back over. And then it, it'll defeat the purpose of what I'm trying to achieve, which is everything to be dry. The nice thing about braking is that it doesn't do that, especially with a kicker wheel. The kicker wheel like, makes a huge difference. Um, so let's see if this does better. Of course, driving at 10 RPMs is gonna be really hard on the tractor. going 15 RPM right now. So you go just a little bit closer to 15, it starts to scatter it a little too far. PTO on this thing is so long, it just, yeah. All right, so let me see if I can turn this the other direction. So right now, it's down and it's flipping up. If we push it the other way, maybe that would help. I don't know. I thought this was the way you're supposed to do it. All right, so let's push it so that the back is tipped. I do not like this because I can't see my U-joint at all. If it tips back too much, that's going to be hard on the U-joint. <sighs> Alright, let's try this quick and see. I love this button here. Let's see what we got. Oh. Yeah, it definitely doesn't like that. Alright, so that's definitely not going to be the solution. I guess I'll put it back to the way it was and maybe just see if I can get less tip on it. I don't know. It's uh, not tipped down quite so much and you, obviously it's not clattering, so we'll give it a shot. But I mean, it's, it's barely, barely even touching it. Oh, well, I guess it is a little bit. Kind of. Not really. some of it, but not, not much. I guess it is. I guess it is. A little bit faster. All right, if we can keep it like that, that'll be kind of perfect. Auto steer would 
be nice on this one, but um, I don't know if it's gonna be able to figure this out either. Here comes Eric on the Hobsco electric bicycle. He still doesn't have the fenders on there, which he, <laughs> he's gonna find out pretty quick. Uh, isn't much fun because he's gonna get water up his back and I think he figured that out. <laughs> he's like, oh crap, I'm getting water up my butt. Look at him. <laughs> jumping right into raking hay. Um, by the time I went to tend the field, it was actually almost all the way dry. And Eric came out looking at it while I was tending and he's like, this is dry, you don't need to tend this. So I got half the field tended, and half of it tended, and then half of it non-tended. So maybe it'll work out because I'm gonna probably bail this first half anyway tomorrow. Um, I did not adjust the hay rake back in it's probably gonna have to be flipped tomorrow anyway, so I can just rake it a little bit wider and then when I go through to flip it, it'll just naturally tighten it up anyway. We actually have some crazy clouds rolling in and we did get a couple sprinkles. So I don't know what's going on, but this is just, this is just crazy weather. I don't know, it's just, it's weird. Anyway, let's get raking and see what we have here today. Uh, we are up in B3 on rabbit gear, rabbit gear. We're gonna push up our RPMs a little bit. We don't need a lot of RPMs with the rake because we're not running the, um, the PTO. Uh, you can see we gotta get that corner over there a little bit better. So this is the windrow that it's giving us right now. should be on the end of the row, not in the grass. It's pulling up some grass, some live grass. Call me some slag. It's hard to drive and steer and run the camera and make sure you're not looking at just the ground at the same time. So, a couple of you guys had wanted to know why why an auto steer system would work and benefit for making hay. And the answer is it keeps your lines straight and you don't have so much crazy tractor driving. My field is very uneven. Um, it, it's very curvy. It's like a large woman. <laughs> I, oh, I'm missing a lot of hay. Ah! Missing a lot of big hay. That's some thick hay that I just missed. See? Um, you know, you mess up your cutting means you mess up your raking means you mess up your, your bailing. I mean, all of it. And if you get off a little bit and you're driving or you end up with a row like that, then I mean, it, it affects everything. Like, look at, I can't even get that little edge over there. If you had it dialed in with an auto steer, you're not gonna have that issue. You're gonna collect everything off the field. Um, you're probably wondering why I'm not using my auto steer system. And the answer is because I don't have it set up yet for this field. Um, you have to program the field in and your implements. So you have to measure everything and know um, the working width. And that takes time. And uh, we all know that moms who farm don't have much time because when they're not farming, they are taking care of the kids, the husband, the house, and everything else. So. Um, yeah, it's a little bit tricky. Ooh, I think I'm doing pretty good on this. A little bit tricky getting time for that. Um, ooh, look how nice that grass looks over there. That looked really bad for first cutting. Not that it looks amazing, but it looks a lot better. This grass just definitely needs some TLC. This is all thick. That's wetland grass, and that's more sandy loam out there. But, I mean, that looks pretty decent right there. But the problem, oh shoot. I just was, see right there, I was going straight and then this started curving this way. 
If I had auto steer, it would have picked that up because it would have been programmed in. Um, the field kicks slightly over to the left and I totally missed that. Actually, if you look at it, there's a chunk of hay that's not getting flipped because it is so wide. So that could be a problem. I don't know. And the other problem is I was collecting this whole row over here and then not that row. All right, well, we can back up with this. It's easy enough. Oh, except I'm not backing up straight. Uh, I do know how to drive a trailer. I do know how to drive a trailer. Oh, crap. All right, I gotta go. I'm just messing this all up. Well, we might be in some trouble because the skies are getting darker and darker and darker out here. I can feel like a cold front blowing in and I cannot get this stupid rake adjusted. Now I know that I adjusted this last year, but for the life of me, it is not working. I'm pretty sure that this has to come out and then this telescope's in and out, but I can't get the pin out. I've tried everything. I've tried down, I've tried up. Right now this is loose, um, so we're gonna tighten it up. And I don't know which way's out, <laughs> which way's in. Um, Oh, you see this just, hey, okay, right there. Woo, got one out. <laughs> you have no idea how long I've been working on this. But it's just like, there's no such thing as a simple task with farming. There's always just like dumb stuff that pops in. All right, let's see if I can get this done. This one's really stuck. I need to find the sweet spot. I run supplies. Not that it's really gonna work. Because it won't. I can't even get in there. There's no way to get in there. Come on. That's where it seems to work pretty well. I'm gonna do the other side in tandem as much as possible because I have the two tines at the top and I don't want them touching on each other too much here. I don't know what it is about wasps and hay equipment, but they really seem to like it. Woo, that did something. This is how to adjust your wheel right. Maybe just one whole setting will be fine. We're gonna lock this in. I thought it was a wasp, it was grass. Sorry.
say it wouldn't be hay season if we had some sort of activity right smack in the middle of it. This year, we happened upon an event that was brand new to us. It was kids mountain bike racing. Now, we had been mountain biking just a handful of times. Obviously, we did the Hobsco electric bike, and that was the first time that our son had ever been on a mountain bike trail, and he adored it. So, we had tried to get out a couple of times over the summer to go mountain biking, and finally upgraded him to an actual mountain bike from his BMX bike. So, he'd only ridden it three times for a total of five times mountain biking period in his life. And we heard about this open contest for anybody at all that was a kid to come in and compete in a big, massive mountain bike race. Now there actually is a mountain biking club in our area. They are full. They are full and they're not taking anybody else in. So these kids that have been training all year, all summer with professionals, are going to be some of the key people in this race. We didn't know what to expect. He's competing against professional kids with professional equipment. Well, the first kid came in at a time of about 14 minutes. That was pretty good. I don't remember how long the trail was. I think it might have been three miles long, but that's three miles of not flat trails of giant hills, like big hills. Uh, this is actually at the ski range. We got a big group coming across the hill. Let's cheer them on. They're almost there. And, man, you know, I couldn't have been more proud of him. He didn't get first, he didn't get second or third, but he made it right smack in the middle of the pack of kids. Again, these are kids that have had, like, lots of training, lots of experience, and he's only ever been mountain biking five times. So to make it in the middle of the pack was amazing for him. You know, he was disappointed that he didn't get first, but I kept telling him that he did a fantastic job. I don't know if he'll ever try it again because he was really tired afterwards. What do you think, Bob? He he needs a pretty tired? Bike. You did good, you're right in the middle of the pack. So what do you think your race? And another finisher, 8-3-1. Nice job. You look a little hot. Bruce coming across the face of Cannonsburg. Would you do it again if you could? No. <laughs> but I got these really cool medals on Amazon. Okay, so they're pretty chintzy. So I thought that I could stick one of these on the taser laser and uh, measure out the circle area and actually engrave. Um, congratulations on your first race or something like that on this medal and then give it to them and tell them oh look what they sent you in the mail because literally the kids got rocks for winning first place and I don't know about you but a rock with a smiley face on it just doesn't sound like exciting enough for me to do a race like that having one of these lasers on hand is so handy because you can just pop one of these things out eight bucks for a three pack of these on Amazon and, uh, you know, we can make a kid's day. <sighs> anyway, so that was uh, some of the excitement during hay season. And of course, it wouldn't be hay season without a little bit more excitement. 